false claims of voter fraud related to the election. Uh, Tara and Dave are both back with me. Dave, I'll start with you and talk to us about what was laid out in this indictment, what's significant about who was charged and why Donald Trump was not charged if they believe he was uh, allegedly involved in this effort. Well, Boris Epstein was charged. That's a first. You know, he was not charged in Georgia for the fake elector scheme there. He was an unindicted co-conspirator in the election interference case in D.C. brought by Jack Smith. But for the first time, he's going to pay the price here in Arizona. And he's essentially Donald Trump's consigliere. He's the inside counsel. And you got to believe that if he's involved in this, then Donald Trump is personally involved. But why wasn't Donald Trump charged himself? Well, I think it's because the attorney general there saw when Trump is charged in other cases, the cases slow down to a creep. And whether it's because he's claiming political interference or he, or the judges give him a lot of deference or he has all these delay tactics at work, it's really hurt these other cases. So I think what she's doing is she's saying, OK, we're going to charge all the other players and we're going to see if some of them will flip against the boss. And then we may bring the case against Trump later when we have a more solid case, because if you're going to get the king, you know, you better have the goods. Yeah, uh, uh, Tara, there was also a number of Arizona officials charged as well, including these two state legislators and the Republican National Committee's uh, Arizona chairman. Talk to me about what these indictments spell out for the broader Republican Party in Arizona and nationally due to all these legal cases they are now facing. Oh, it's uh, doing is she say, OK, we're going to charge all the other players and we're going to see if some of them will flip against the boss. And then we may bring the case against Trump later when we have a more solid case, because if you're going to get the king, you know, you better have the goods. Yeah, uh, uh, Tara, there was also a number of Arizona officials charged as well, including these two state legislators and the Republican National Committee's uh, Arizona chairman. Talk to me about what these indictments spell out for the broader Republican Party in Arizona and nationally due to all these legal cases they are now facing. Oh, it's a mess. I mean, it's absolute chaos, but that's chaos is the point. They live on this uh, in the Republican Party now. Anytime you have Trump, you have chaos. And this is a perfect example. Um, this is not a good look for them. And if people remember the cyber ninjas, that was Arizona. I mean, Arizona and right, the Republicans exactly. <laughs> out there, right? They have been a, a circus for years. So I'm glad to see that that finally people are being held accountable for that. And the, I mean, as if we didn't know back when the cyber ninjas, which was just one of the most asinine things we've ever seen. And after the result of all of that, you had Biden get 99 more votes and Trump 261 less votes. So even a Trump friendly <laughs> audit couldn't even get him more votes in Arizona. So this has just been a slow trickle of um, of problematic behavior by the Republican Party in Arizona. Right. And you know what? Arizona is ground zero. It is ground zero for this election. It was already a battleground state, but the political tectonic plates have really shifted here between the Arizona abortion law, because they're trying to party like it's 1864 in, in <laughs> Arizona. Um, now you have this case reminding people of the cyber ninjas and all the disastrous behavior after the election. Um, this has really put Arizona in a good Good place for the Democrats to swoop in and for Joe Biden to take that state. It's going to take work, but this has really opened that up, and I'm here for it. And there's an interesting thing at play here as well, um, David, which is why these charges have now happened. I mean, it's 2024. It's almost four years after the attempted overturn of these elections, but they're happening now, and there's something that is revealing about why they're happening now. It's because the politicians in Arizona decided to do something about it, even if it is two years late. Elections matter. And the reason why this is being brought now is because the attorney general, uh, Chris Mays, a Democrat, was elected in November 2022. She didn't take office until January of 2023. Her predecessor could have brought this, Mark Burnovich, a conservative Republican, but he refused to, even when he was asked to do so by Katie Hobbs, the secretary of state, who's now the governor. Apparently, he took her letter and threw it in the trash. And to show you why elections have consequences. We now have another piece of the puzzle showing how big and organized Donald Trump's alleged plot to stay in power after losing the 2020 election really was. Among the headlines this week about the most legally ensnared former president in American history, the charges in Arizona against 11 so-called fake electors and key aides to Trump 
as the New York Times, as, as I'm sorry, as NBC News report states, are the latest example of Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election sprouting into legal cases during his 2024 bid to retake office. Arizona was one of the seven states where alternate electors signed paperwork falsely claiming Trump had won the states. Prosecutors have already charged alternate electors, this is in quotes, in Nevada, Georgia, and Michigan. Now, here's the thing about the story. Lest you think that this attempt uh, after January 6th uh, was some fly-by-night crackpot, or, or leading up to January 6th, was some fly-by-night crackpot scheme, the Arizona indictment yet again proves how coordinated these plots allegedly went all the way up to Donald Trump. And again, from NBC News, quote, Trump is described as unindicted conspirator one in Arizona indictment, which includes charges of conspiracy, fraud and forgery, end quote. The Trump aides who've been included, who have been indicted include Mark Meadows, Trump's former White House chief of staff, Rudy Giuliani, the former New York City mayor and Trump attorney, Boris Epstein, a Trump campaign official and attorney, former Trump campaign and White House official Mike Roman, former Trump attorney Jenny, uh, Jenna Ellis, former Trump attorney Christina Bob, and John Eastman, yet another attorney and Trump legal advisor in the aftermath of the 2020 election, end quote. These are very, very real charges of very real crimes allegedly committed at the highest levels of the Trump campaign and the Trump White House. Trump himself is, of course, charged in Georgia's indictment. The seven states with fake electors in 2020 were left to right on your screen. Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, Wisconsin, Michigan, Georgia, and Pennsylvania. As we've said, we've seen charges in four of those states now, Nevada, Arizona, Michigan, and Georgia. All seven of these states are key battleground states that could be decisive in this year's election. Joining us now is Ryan J. Riley, justice reporter for NBC and the author of the remarkable book, Sedition Hunters, How January 6th Broke the Justice System. Ryan, Here's the thing. That Georgia indictment is so detailed. It's got texts. It's got communications that go well beyond Georgia, goes to Pennsylvania, goes to Michigan, uh, goes to to Arizona. Go so this the, the information is not new to us. But the, the degree to which this was a sophisticated effort to overturn democracy is clearer and clearer with each of these indictments. It's true. And also, you know, even in the Supreme Court this week, I found what was interesting in the arguments is you had the Trump lawyer essentially concede there that this was not activity that could be considered official presidential acts. This was private activity because the justices lined up some of those questions for him and coordinating with some of these individuals um, was really could would end up being part of the center of this case of the of the federal case if that ever actually goes to trial. Of course, you know, the fact that the Supreme Court even had, had the arguments this week was a huge win for Trump. And it seems like this is is almost guaranteed to get kicked back uh, past uh, the election at this point, or certainly we won't get to a verdict um, by the time the election actually comes about. But, you know, say in 2025 or whenever this goes, um, theoretically, if Donald Trump does not get reelected, that's really what um, we're going to be focusing on is a lot of these these efforts to make January 6th this major day and create the sort of chaos and catastrophe that would allow for this for them essentially to take the election because there was so much confusion. They ultimately wanted to get this to the Supreme Court, creating that chaos and creating this confusion and, and trying to get Mike Pence in on this deal was really the essence of what all of this was about. The riot, on, on the other hand, was an addition, additional part of that chaos, um, but really it was to create this environment in which they could seize uh, the, the power and keep and stay in the White House. And as you read the January 6th indictment by Jack Smith's team, or you read the Georgia indictment, or you see what happened in Michigan, or you're reading uh, this information out of Arizona, what you're realizing is that what at the time looked a bit like a clown show, right? Rudy Giuliani showing up at the Four Seasons landscaping place in Philadelphia with makeup dripping down his face. It seemed disorganized, but in fact, there was a plot. So, folks, what we're seeing is Trump getting absolutely whacked by these new series of charges. Now, we need to be clear that these are less charges on Trump, but he's still being hit by them. If you're a family member of someone charged, you're hit by them in, in that you get the consequences. You know, your family member could go to jail if they are fined. That fine, fine comes out of your family's budget. But here with Trump, it's that because these are you know, friends, colleagues, whatever. But it's also people that are involved in his schemes.
And as noted, it demonstrates a couple things that screws him in the current criminal trials he's already in, but also potential ones down the line. It demonstrates that, as noted, the clown show, which yeah, it was a clown show that deserves some mockery, the, 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 the hair dye and all of that. But it was... But it was also more coordinated than we thought. There's there's some criminal intent there. At least that's what these new charges are, are, are really laying out. And it also demonstrates that this wasn't just little random people doing this on the ground level or even just, you know, Rudy going rogue and doing it himself, but rather a concerted effort that goes right to the top. And as people know, like the, the conciliary using the, the mafia terms, like Trump's conciliaries, his top people, his soldiers, his captains, his, the people he's sending out to do the dirty work, they're getting caught and it provides the link to Trump. So he's getting hit by the political and legal and financial consequences of these charges, and they're not even on him fully, at least not yet. 